This episode of The Shadow is called, Death House Rescue. Paul Gordon is locked up in the death house protesting his innocence. His only crime was to need a job, and accept one from some guys who needed a driver. It turns out they needed him as a getaway driver from a bank robbery, and when a policeman gets killed, Gordon finds himself in deep trouble. Only the shadow knows, and can help him now. Cast, Bill Johnston, Orson Welles. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> the shadow knows. Blue Cole presents The Shadow, a man of mystery who strikes terror in the very souls of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. All signs point to a severe winter. Be prepared. If you want to be sure of even, dependable, healthful heat in any kind of weather, insist on Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite mined from the fields of northern Pennsylvania. The coal that has colored a harmless blue at the mines for your protection. You can't have me in the You can't do it. Let me out of here. Let me... Paul Gordon... Listen. Huh? I can't see anybody. Who's that? I am the shadow. <laughs> Stop. We haven't much time. We must hurry, Gordon. You're in the death house, charged with murder. Yes, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. But nobody knows it. Take courage, Gordon. The shadow knows. <laughs> All right, Margot, won't you sit down? I told Albol to serve our coffee here in the library. I should rather go on the terrace. No, I prefer it here. Then let me see you smile. That frown is most unbecoming. Lamont, give it up. Give what up, my dear? Drinking coffee? I'm serious, Lamont Cranston. When I foolishly let you know that... Do you remember what you said? It will be exactly five years next week. But there's still so much to do, Margot. Well, then let somebody else do it. Don't you realize that you can't keep on like this forever? Someone's certain to identify you, and when that someone does, someone else is certain to kill you. Perhaps, but until they do... Oh, darling, stop frowning. I don't mean necessarily to give up your work, Lamont, but this other... Let the shadow just disappear and, and come out openly. Join the organized forces of law and police. Won't you realize, Margot that my entire usefulness to the organized forces of law and police lies in my remaining outside those forces, in remaining always the shadow. Would they approve my methods? Would they believe in my science? You would make them believe. You could make them approve. And in doing so, reveal my secrets, my knowledge. Reveal them and eventually let them fall into the hands of organized crime. No, Margot. No one must ever know. No one but you why do you think I've devoted countless hours to investigating electrical and chemical phenomena? Why do you think I went to India, to, to Egypt, to China? What do you think I studied in London, Paris, and Vienna? Except to learn the old mysteries that modern science has not yet rediscovered. The natural magic modern psychology is beginning to understand. And, well, magic that wouldn't seem so natural. I studied and learned for a purpose, my dear. All right, Lamont, I, I realize all that. But now, now the entire underworld has but one objective. To erase the shadow. And to me, that means... Until they know what the shadow is and who he is, what can they do? Stop and think how many criminals are either dead or in prison because of our activities. Why, even now, tonight, as we sit quietly here, somewhere... An innocent human being may be in desperate trouble. Somewhere, perhaps, there is a problem that can never be solved, except by the shadow. What did the doctor say, Grace? It was good news and, and bad, too, I'm afraid, dear. Well, 
Whatever it was, dear. Tell me. Well, he said the baby could be perfectly well again within a year. Oh, thank God for that. Poor kid. She's had a tough time. Well, what else? Well, this part isn't so good, Paul. She'll need treatments during all that time. Paul, treatments cost money. I know. Well, we'll have to manage somehow. You didn't do a very good job marrying me, dear. Darling. If I can only get a job. I've got my health and I've got brains. But no one seems to want them. Oh, they will, dear. They've got to. Mm -hmm. You're right about that. We're just about down to rock bottom. I've raised every cent I can on the house and car. There isn't anything left. You and I are still left, Paul. And we've got to take care of Sally. She's our daughter, Paul, and she's got to have her chance. Mm, She's going to have it. Somehow. Tomorrow I'll start out and take anything I can get. Darling, perhaps tomorrow things will break for us. Yes. If only they don't break the wrong way. Excuse me, but are you the boss here? That's right. I'm looking for a job. Nothing doing, buddy. I'll do anything. Wait on table, wash dishes, anything at all. I don't need any more help. Well, how about delivering things? I've got a car. Nope, I don't deliver nothing. Sorry, I don't need you. I see. All right. Thanks. Hey. Hey, you. What? You calling to me? Yeah, sit down. Have a beer. No, thanks. I, I don't drink. Anyhow, sit down. I made a friend of mine named Lefty. My name's Red. <laughs> Look at my hair and you'll know why. Well, I'm glad to meet you both. And Gordon's my name, Paul Gordon. Well, did, do you want to talk to me about something? We might. Might be able to help you out. Sounds like you're looking for a job. You bet I am. I, I need one. You know anybody that could use me? Maybe. We don't know you yet. Huh. So far as that goes... I don't know you either. So you read the guy smart. Yeah, maybe too smart. Now look here, Mr. Gordon. We need a car, and we need somebody to drive it for us. You understand? Well, I've got a car, and I can drive. Is it a good car? Has it got speed? I guarantee you up to 80. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now listen, kid. How about meeting us tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock? All right. Where? Well, let's see. Uh, We're going to... um... I got it. Right in front of the Uptown Bank. We got to go there first to cash a check. Well... How about five dollars a day? That's all. But you'll remember, be there at nine o'clock or you don't get no job. (laughs) Don't worry, I'll be there. I'll be there at eight o'clock. Hey, buddy, you can't keep this car in front of the bank all day. Can't you see that sign, no parking? I'm not parking, officer. I'm waiting for a couple of men. I'm working for them. Oh, Hey, what's that? It sounds like shots in the bank. Hey, there. There you You got him, Lefty. Here he is with the car. Come on, you start that bus for Step on it, fella. Hey, brother, you can't do that. Go on, I will show. Let him have it, Red. Hold him off. I'll hold him. Wish I'd never have shot that cop. Can't you get no more speed out of this car, fella? She's doing all she can. Shoot at that tires, Red. I missed him. Try the windshield. Say, let me out of this. Take the car. You don't think I'm in with you. That's just what we're figuring on. Now, here comes the curb. After you make that stop. Get ready, Red. I'm ready. I'm just leaving the evidence. Put it under the seat cushion. All right. Okay, goodbye, Gordon. Thanks for the Hey, work. hey, wait, you guys. Don't leave me like this. They'll think I did it. Hey, come on back, will you? Look out. <laughs> Up with your hands. Come on, get them up. All right, officer. I haven't got a gun. I wasn't in this. They made me drive the car. Yeah, keep your hands up just the same. Go throw the car, Charlie. Okay, Sarge. Now, fella, you might as well come clean on this. I haven't done anything. I tell you, I'm innocent. Hey, Sarge, I got it. Under the rear seat cushion. A bag full of bills and a gun. That's the gun that bumped off my buddy, Louie. And you say you're innocent. Yes, I am. Well, it'll take more than saying so to keep you out of the electric chair. found you guilty of robbery under arms and statutory murder. 
You have been shown you have had both motive and opportunity. The prosecution has piled up a mass of incontrovertible evidence. And I myself have no doubt of your guilt. Therefore, in accordance with the law, I direct that you be taken from here to the place from whence you came, and that there you be put to death in the manner stated by the law. And may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> hey, who was that? Where's that man? Who laughed? Bring that person before the court. Well, I... I don't know where he is, Your Honor. The laugh came from over there. In that corner. Yes. Yes, Your Honor, but... There's no one in that corner. Only... A shadow. <laughs> Go to sleep, dear. Mother will be right here in the next room. Oh, God. Please help me. Help me. I don't know what to do. Yes? Who is it? My name is Margot Lane. I have a message for you, Mrs. Gordon. You're not a reporter, are you? No, I'm a friend. I've come to help. Oh, th then please come in. What is it you want, Miss Lane? Mrs. Gordon, your husband has a friend who's going to help him. Here's a thousand dollars in cash. Huh? That's for you and Sally. A thousand? Who was it sent this to me? Well, that I can't tell you. But the message with it is not to lose hope. Oh, the, there is hope for Paul, then. The man who sent this to you never fails. Who is he? Of that I can't tell you. But, Miss Lane, you know him. Sometimes I wonder whether I do. I love him. But I wonder whether I know him. What do you mean? It's hard to tell whether I really know the man or only his shadow. Well, Lefty, tonight the fall guy goes to the chair. That's what he gets for being a sucker. Yeah, there's not a clue that even points our way. Not even a print. We had gloves on all the time. You had yours off for a minute when you were sitting next to him. Yeah, but uh, I didn't touch the wheel. Then we ain't left a clue. You think so? Who said that? You, Lefty? No, I, I thought it was you. It was I. You cannot see me. Who are you? And where are you? I am here in the room. In the shadow. You have pinned your crime on an innocent man. He shall not suffer, but you will. I don't know who you are, where you are, but you're bluffing anyway. You got no evidence. We didn't leave a clue. You did leave a clue. A clue that will send you to the chair. Where was it? Where was it? You're lying. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to believe that? Keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. The clue that you forgot. <laughs> Margot Lane. Paul Gordon is in the death house and is to die in the chair tonight. I am going to him now. We can still save him. Stand by. For orders. In a few moments, we will return to the shadow. But before we do, let me stress this one fact. For home heating, anthracite is best. And America's finest anthracite is blue coal. Anthracite is the healthful fuel. It gives steady, uniform heat that helps prevent colds and cuts down doctor's bills. For with anthracite, there is no quick chilling of the house, such as you get with fuels of the on and off type, or with quick-burning fuels that flare up and burn out. Bear in mind that heating plants in this part of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. So before that coal snap catches you unaware, call your local blue coal dealer. You'll find his name listed in the where-to-buy-it section of your classified directory under the words Blue Coal. Call him tomorrow and order a supply of America's finest anthracite. <laughs> Any word from the governor? I'm sorry, Gordon. 
The governor refuses to take any action. Thank you. I've got to go. Tonight? At 11 o'clock. What? What time is it now? Almost 10. Is there anything I can do for you? No. Thank you, Walt. Very well. These guards will move you to another cell. I'll be back in a little while. Ready, Gordon? Yes, guard. We're just going to move you to another cell. <laughs> what does it matter? The one you're going to is nearer... <laughs> nearer to the chair, is that it? Let's go. All right, Gordon. Walk the left. You'll be right here behind him. Now, lock the door into this preparation chamber, Pete. Okay. Just a second. All right. Go on through, Gordon. Watch him, Pete. I'll shut the door. Huh. What's the use of all this trouble? What chance have I got now? I'm afraid you haven't got much, fella. Uh, I wouldn't say that. What do you mean? Holy smokes. Look behind you. Where? There. Oh. Well, too bad. I hated to do that, but there wasn't any other way, and he'll only be out for a while. Now, Gordon, listen to me. Hey. Where are you? I can't see you anymore. Where have you gone? Back into the shadow. Now, Gordon, we haven't much time... Listen to me. No crime is perfect. There's always somewhere a loose end. The only reason that all crimes aren't solved is because there's some one fact that someone knows and doesn't tell. And sometimes they don't tell because they don't know that they know. I told everything I know in court. They wouldn't believe me then. Because you couldn't prove what you said. We are going after the proof now. You and I. How? I'm going to think with your mind. I don't know what you mean. Don't try to understand. Just do as I tell you. I want you to concentrate, Gordon. Fix your mind on everything that happened that day. Make mental pictures. I'll see what you see. I'll try it now. No. No, Gordon. Stop thinking about your wife and baby. How did you know I was thinking about I that? I saw it. In your mind. I see in my mind. The pictures you create in yours. Oh. Like television? Yes. Or like mental telepathy or mind reading. Hypnotism. Whatever you choose. There's no time to talk. Stop talking. Think. I will. I will. I'm thinking now. The picture is getting clearer. That's better. Go on. The restaurant? The bar? Gordon, stop thinking about the electric chair. It blurs the picture. I'll try. I'll try. Ah. That's better. The car... In front of the bank. Yes, I see it. The policeman. The crowd. Yes. Wait a minute. The small man with red hair. He was the one you called Red. Yes. Yes, I see him. Crooked nose, short, glasses. I know that man. He's Red Sloan. I, I, it's hard to see. I know. Think for your life. Try hard. Yes, you started the car. The other, Lefty, was in front with you. Lefty. Lefty. See him for me, Gordon. Ah, yes. A scar on his left cheek. Why didn't you mention that in court? I, I forgot. Never mind. Concentrate. Yes. Yes. 
Lefty couldn't keep you covered with a gun and look back at the same time. What did he do? He reached up and twisted the rear view mirror. Now we've got it. Ah, that's the loose end. That's where his thumbprint will be. Gordon, now I can save you. You've told the truth. You didn't know you knew. Right, you're a fool for coming in here again. This is the place we picked up that kid that's burning tonight. What do you want to come in here for? This is as good a place as any, ain't it? Hey, telephone for you, Lefty. Telephone? Yeah, maybe you never heard of it, but it's a great invention. But nobody knows I'm here. Well, somebody knows because they're waiting on the phone for you. It's over there on the wall. Okay. Don't be too long, Lefty. Hello? <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at? Who is this? Lefty, did you ever hear of the shadow? Yeah. Say, what is this? Too bad about young Gordon, isn't it, Lefty? What do you know about that? The shadow knows. Who are you? What do you want? I want justice. Justice for Paul Gordon, Lefty. And I'm going to get it. But you ain't got no evidence. No. Perhaps there are some fingerprints, Lefty. Oh, no. We had gloves on. There couldn't be no fingerprints. Did you have gloves on all the time? Yeah, sure. I did. You're left-handed. Now listen carefully, Lefty. When you were sitting in the front seat of Gordon's car, your gun was in your left hand. Remember? Say, you ain't nobody, I. It's just, say... How do you know? What did you do with your right hand? My right hand? You took off your right glove, didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, gosh, I'm going nuts. And you couldn't see the car that was chasing you because the angle of the rearview mirror was adjusted for the driver and you weren't driving, so... Do you remember what you did? No, no, I didn't. I didn't take it off. Are you sure you didn't reach up with your bare right hand and turn that rear view mirror? Are you sure, Lefty? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Maybe I did that. If the police find that fingerprint, you'll burn, Lefty. Just the way young Gordon's going to burn tonight. Goodbye, Lefty. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He hung up. No. No. I won't burn. Hey, Red. Red. Yeah, it's certainly gab long enough. Say, who was the guy? Never mind the... that. Where's that car of Gordon's now? In his garage. I guess I heard his wife. Cut. Listen. What? I got a hunch. There's some fingerprints of mine in that car. Red, we got to wipe them off of there, or maybe we'll burn in that chair, too. Come on, let's go. Commissioner. I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but I don't see what we can do. But I tell you, Paul Gordon is innocent. The men who committed the crime are free. Where did you get this information? Oh, that I can't tell you. Uh, Miss Lane, Paul Gordon was convicted of murder by due processes of law. Tonight he pays for his crime in the electric chair. If the police listen to every crank who came in here claiming new evidence... But they can't send an innocent man to the chair. They can't do it. No, but they can send a guilty man. And according to the evidence, Paul Gordon is guilty. Commissioner, suppose that uh, afterwards, when it's too late, they discover that Paul Gordon wasn't guilty after all. And suppose I testify that the police refused to listen. Well, what do you want me to do? If it's within reason, I'll do that. I want you I... to send some men to that garage. I want you to catch the guilty men and see that justice is done. I'm frightened. Brace up, Gordon. It won't be long. Get your chin up, buddy. My turn next. Go <laughs> on, fella. Good luck. Goodbye, kid. Where, where is he? He promised to save me. Who, son? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. He... He said he'd stand by. Now, steady, old man. Don't lose your nerve, Gordon. Open it up, men. 
No. All right, we'll go in there. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. I didn't, I tell you. He said he'd stand by. He's warden, wait. Only a few minutes more. Just a few minutes. Don't take me in there yet. Now, now wait, please, please. He said, please wait. Easy, Gordon. I'm sorry. Every time I go in that door, I'm gone. It'll be too late then. Take him in, men. No, 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 wait. Oh, where are you? Where's that voice? Where did he go? Please come back. Warden. Warden. Wait a minute, men. Well, what is it? Warden, wait. The governor's on the phone. He says, stop. Hold up everything. What'd the governor say? He wants to talk to you on the phone, Warden. He says, don't electrocute this man. They've got the other two guys in Gordon's garage, trying to rub out some fingerprints. One of them was shot and died. But before he died, he spilled it all. This fellow didn't do it. It was a frame-up. Oh, thank God he got me in time. Gordon. Gordon. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes, I heard it. That voice said he would. I'm free. You're not going to electrocute me, Warden. You're not. No. No, Gordon. The governor saved you. Governor? No. It wasn't the governor. It was somebody else. Or something else. But what do you mean, Gordon? Who saved you? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. I never really saw him. He was only... A shadow. Before another adventure with the shadow draws to a close, John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, would like to say a few words. Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. If you're interested in having a more comfortable home this winter, be sure to call your local Blue Coal dealer. For he's more than a fuel dealer. He's an authority on modern home heating. You see, for more than six years, I've trained servicemen for these blue coal dealers. These men, known as John Barclay servicemen, have added thousands of families like yours to enjoy a greater degree of comfort and to save heating dollars, too. I'm going to read part of a letter typical of many received from satisfied customers using blue coal and John Barclay service. I quote in part, The service rendered by your John Barclay servicemen has been invaluable to me. We were burning a ton of coal a week and having great difficulty in keeping our fire going throughout the night. Your serviceman made me many helpful suggestions regarding the proper way to regulate the furnace and recommended the use of blue coal. We not only reduced the amount of fuel consumed to one half, but actually got more heat. Think of that, friends. In this case, a family cut their fuel bill in half simply by following the advice of a John Barclay serviceman whose services were given without charge. Now, you don't have to buy blue coal to benefit from John Barclay service. No matter what kind of fuel you're using or from whom you've been buying, if you have any heating problems, consult the blue coal dealer. He'll be very glad to place his John Barclay service man at your disposal to solve your problems. I thank you. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. Real names are never used in these shadow stories. (laughs) The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. (laughs) 